Hi guys, in this video I'm going to share with you the crazy things I have done for my business over the past 7 years. There's been way more but I've kind of narrowed it down to 5 that I think you guys will be inspired by and also find quite funny. I've... <laughs> I've had to do quite a few things to like chase my dream, have faith, take the leap and all of that kind of stuff. And also when there's been emergencies within my business and how it's running, I've had to do some some pretty crazy things. So I thought I'd come up with this idea. If anyone watching is an entrepreneur, I would love for you to copy this title and make your own video and talk about the crazy things you've had to do for your business so let's just get straight into it so number one and most of these stories are going to include traveling because it's just like something i used to love to do alone for some crazy reason i don't think i would do it now somehow i just had no fear back then so yeah wouldn't recommend it and would not do it now but number one is in 2000 and i want to say 19 yeah 2019 i decided to travel to italy alone and discover my fabric somewhere bear in mind i know no one from italy i don't know italy never been before don't know the area or nothing but the superwoman thinks she can you know take over the world and know what to do so which i am pretty good at traveling but still you never know what could have happened and we thank god nothing happened i'm gonna put in some clips as well footage of where i was so just so you know i'm really not making this up this is real life craziness it was a time in 2019 when my fabric supplier ran out of fabric and my business was going really really well i was getting regular orders and all of a sudden i couldn't supply my pillowcases because there wasn't any fabric and good thing about oh so curly is that my pillowcases we don't just use any typical satin the satin that I use for my pillowcases I cannot find anywhere else especially in the UK I have tried outside of London I've tried London and I can never find that specific feel and that specific fabric so annoying I'm sure I could probably find it somewhere in the UK but it won't be at a good price point it will probably be very very high so I spoke with my supplier and I said look like when is it gonna be back in stock they said they don't know they said it could be a couple of months they're not sure but most likely a couple of months and with me like my pillowcases are the best seller so i couldn't go a couple of months without selling them so it came to the point where i thought okay cool i'm gonna have to find another way to get this fabric so i got kind of close to the supplier and this is a good tip make sure that you are quite close with your supplier and you're keeping them up to date with everything that's going on and you're quite regular and you're good you have a good relationship with them so i asked him where do you actually get the fabric from and he stated italy so i said okay so like where in italy and he said our manager usually goes to Italy and sources fabric from Milan. He said that there is quite a few fabric stores in Milan that you'll be able to take a look around that area and you'll probably find that fabric. I had won money from a pitching competition from Business Launchpad earlier on in the year and I had a bit of money. I think I only had like 300 pounds or something left of that. So I decided to use that money to travel to Italy. <laughs> Thinking back, I'm like, what was I doing? I booked my ticket. I was like, I'll go there on a budget. I'll just stay in a typical hotel. It was actually a quite nice hotel, but you know those like a Holiday Inn type thing. I'll book that in Milan. I will travel from the airport to Milan on public transport. Like I've used the Metro in Portugal before. It can't be that different. It actually wasn't. I was able to do that. So when I landed, my ticket for the Metro, I bought a ticket and someone approached me and said like, this is how you buy it and this is where you would buy it from something like that and basically they took my money luckily it wasn't all of my money and the police were there and i think i got it back or something like that the police were involved and but the police had guns like huge guns and i'm thinking this could be a racist police officer i was the only person of color in that area so i was a bit like mm, i can't be getting myself into these situations 
So anyway, I stayed for I think one night, one or two nights, no it must have been two nights so I gave myself like two to three days to do some exploring so as soon as I got there, dropped my bags and it was time to explore. So I had the map of Milan and I was told a certain area where there are fabric stores, I did my research online, I was searching all of the fabric stores in Milan and I looked at the map, I'm actually really like, I rate myself like, I'm very smart. I had the map of Milan and I would circle where they were all were and then I would organize my day like schedule my day out to kind of map out okay I can get to this area within 20 minutes and then from there to there to there so I did actually go to every single fabric store and area with stores in Milan could not find the fabric long story short didn't find it found similar but did not find it so that was pretty much a waste of money so one sacrifice and one crazy story wasting over 300 pound um, probably even like 400 including expenses and food and stuff but I got to experience Milan like I got to go to the center with the cathedral and enjoy the sun and sometimes I like traveling alone I don't think I could do it now the older that I get the more I'm like that was crazy but yeah so that was an experience didn't find the fabric so again still in the same position next crazy thing is me traveling to Macedonia for fabric and this was maybe like a, a month or two later so I had no luck with Italy I was actually in touch with an amazing couple who became angel investors for my business they saw the potential in me they believed in me I would say angel investors more like they borrowed me the money and obviously I paid them a percentage more back but they loaned me the money out of like the kindness of their heart obviously it's a little of investment for them but they just saw the potential and wanted to help which I am going to do in the near future too because I want to help other business owners you can actually join my coaching the link is down below or my group mentoring which starts the first of every month so DM me on Instagram for further details on that I decided to obviously I'd met up with the investors I met up with the lovely woman and I decided to <laughs> She's from Macedonia, so she told me that there is huge fabric places in Macedonia and I was more likely to find, if not that fabric, but a similar fabric to the pillowcase one in Macedonia. So again, I took the leap, took the chance and thought, okay, let's give it a try. Let's go to Macedonia. Didn't have much money at all, so she allowed me to stay at her family home, which again, God blessed me as well. Everything was safe, everything went smoothly. Macedonia is, first of all, tiny and it's like surrounded by mountains. The plane to get there, I, uh, my friends will remember this, I was messaging them when I was on the plane, about to take off, the plane was tiny, I didn't feel safe and I really thought, God forbid the plane would have crashed and I was actually, I had tears while I was texting them and saying, I don't want to do this. <laughs> but everything was fine. So I get there and we drive far. The family was so lovely to me. We drive far, we meet with lots of different fabric stores. Again, couldn't find the exact fabric, but did get one that was similar. And I'd made the trip now. I'd made two trips outside of England, yeah, to buy fabric. So I decided, you know what? This is the closest I'm gonna get let me try and buy some of this in bulk so they helped me they gave me the money to buy the fabric in bulk and then i had to log it back with me to the uk getting on a coach from newton airport back to south london two huge suitcases full of fabric i've got pictures here to show you how much fabric i had brought back my leg was bleeding from the suitcase dragging it and walking it was hot when i got back <laughs> And I was just finished, I was just finished. But these are the crazy things I did for my business and for my dream. I often recommend, please make sure that you have multiple, multiple suppliers for your products because things like this happen and you don't wanna be in my position. Number three crazy thing that I did for my business. This is more for UK Curly Girl and not for Oh So Curly. But in my 20s, I liked to travel a lot and I wanted to go to New York and meet up with some New York Curly Girls that I'd met on Instagram. So we had got close, so we were engaging with each other on Instagram. And I thought, you know what? How cool would it be for a London girl to go to New York and just like blog out there and meet up with other curly girls and meet up with brands? And oh, I don't know why, I just feel a bit emotional because it's like, wow, I did a lot. 
thinking about it now like wow i think i was just so go 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 i didn't think about what i was doing but now looking back i'm like so yeah i traveled to new york quite a few times the first time i actually met was shea moisture like what they took me to their um headquarters so i got to see where they make the products i got to see their offices i got to sit down with the c i think it was the ceo at the time and like the top people at the top sat down with me like and bear in mind guys i was not big at all at that time but i thought i can really leverage the fact that i'm from the uk and i really wanted to be involved in the like uk side of shea moisture so that's how that went about i met up with the curly girls i'll put some images here and then um a few years ago i actually went back again for curl fest and i stayed with another curly girl shout out to global curls how she let me stay with her and then we went to like atlantic city and stuff like that so yeah i did a lot of networking online and i managed to connect with curly girls in Miami I used to go to Miami a lot New York as well so traveling just seems to be a current theme even Lisbon I met with some um, natural hair people out in Lisbon and I was flown out there to attend an event this is crazy so yeah that's another crazy thing um, that I did for UK curly girl traveling and networking with people all around the world so number four crazy thing that i had to do this wasn't too crazy and it wasn't something that i had to do but when i was just starting with the pillowcases and i was selling maybe like five a week or maybe 20 a month if that i would get my mum to sew the cotton labels on the pillowcases because it would cost too much for my seamstress to put that on top so the seamstress would just do the pillowcase and then I couldn't get the custom logos put on them. She was gonna charge me way too much to just put a sew a cotton label onto the pillowcase. So, mum, could you please sew? Like she could hand sew, she's not a seamstress at all, but I can't hand sew neatly, she could. So if you are an early oh so curly customer, my mother actually sewed the cotton custom label onto your pillowcase. So yeah, that's something just extra I thought I would add into there. And then my last one is that I quit my job. Now I've done this multiple times. It's crazy, but for some reason I always have. Well, when I was younger, I had so much more faith probably because I lived at home as well. So even though I pay my mum rent, it's like she's not going to kick me out if I can't pay her for a few months, even though she, I was scared of her. <laughs> so I made sure that I found some kind of income. I never could work a month plus with no income coming in she would not have that i quit my job working in tesco as you guys know that story if you don't check out some of my story time videos back in the past the first time i quit my job it was so that i could travel and i wanted to focus on growing oh so curly and uk curly girl which it was growing but it wasn't growing enough to pay so i had to get another job so that was my last job and that was working as a office coordinator at an estate agent's and that is where I wrote my book, Get My Cows Back. And then I quit there after a year working full time to pursue the book and pursue my dream and UK Curly Girl and stuff. So ever since then, I kind of worked part time. But right now I'm in another transition where I'm not working part time. So pray, pray for your girl because uh, I could be out on the streets, but God's got me. So everything's gonna go fine but yeah so now i am a hundred percent full-time influencer and this is what really inspired me well influencer slash entrepreneur owner of oh so curly so this transition has really inspired me to create this video and be more consistent on youtube so you're going to see my face a lot more but i hope this was interesting and you enjoyed this video let me know down below what's the craziest thing you have done for your business and i'll catch you in the next video Bye guys.